If we were to sum up in one word the current state of the Australian private equity market, that word would be cautious. Geopolitical tensions, high inflation and rising interest rates have created significant market volatility. But the good news is that with volatility comes opportunity. In this short video, we'll address three key themes that we see currently playing out in the Australian private equity market. First, heightened due diligence on earnings and on forecasts. Second, increasing interest from private equity sponsors in public targets. And third, the impacts of the current conditions on sale processes and on private equity exits. We continue to see financial sponsors engage in buy-side activity, but the focus, um, given the uncertain times, is on uh, how resilient the target's earnings will be in the future. This has led to greater diligence and focus on the quality of earnings and forecasts, uh, determining whether the assumptions underlying the forecasts can hold for the future. Um, this not only involves the traditional advisors, accountants and financial advisors, but often also specialist advisors. A related but separate point is COVID impacts on businesses. Many businesses, in, uh, in particular in the manufacturing and retail sector, were positively impacted um, by COVID. For example, Harris Farm, which went through a potential sale process, which was, uh, which was later shelved. The question for those businesses undergoing a sale process will be to the extent to which those earnings can be maintained for the future. Looking forward, we see that even if sale processes remain at a stable level, the success rate from agreeing a deal is likely to decline. As we expected, Tate Private Opportunities have been very much in vogue for PE sponsors this year. Blackstone buying Crown after a 12-month pursuit, BGH winning the contest for Virtus, and of course KKR's historic buyout proposal for Ramsey are all good examples. If we look ahead with equity market volatility being set to continue in the near term and private opportunities being much harder to come by, we do expect to see more approaches made in the back half of this year. Ultimately, sponsors are cashed up and still need to find a home for record levels of dry powder. And they'll seek to capitalise where there are suppressed valuations for listed targets that still have defensible earnings. At the same time, the challenge for sponsors will be to convince target boards and convince target shareholders for that matter to see value, but also to navigate the real risk of competing bids in this landscape and also to secure favourable debt financing packages in what is now a, a higher rate environment. As ever, expect to see more approaches made than deals done. In recent times, we've seen a number of transactions which have been aborted or sale processes which have fallen through. The hum and latitude deal collapsed spectacularly. CBC withdrew its bid for Brambles in May. And similarly, the Loscom transaction was pulled by bankers who cited market volatility. So what does this mean for private equity? More opportunity, even more volatility, or does it really give them a chance to usurp others who would otherwise be at the table? First and foremost, the underlying theme is that the exit window for PE sellers seems to be drawing to a close. That's no clearer than in the IPO market, and that combined with rising interest rates inflationary pressures and waning consumer confidence don't help to steady the ship. That said, P buyers will continue to lie in wait and be opportunistic buyers, particularly for those targets that have been shunned from collapsed processes. In this environment, boards of directors will no doubt seek to bolster deal protections with potential counterparties, particularly where bilateral negotiations are on the table. In recent weeks, we've seen deals that are not getting done, getting more attention than those that are getting done. And one thing's for sure, those private capital players and private equity funds with lots of dry powder will come to the fore. They may do it quietly, but it's our expectation that they certainly will come to the fore. 
So, where to from here? Certainly the corporate optimism and deal-making bullishness that characterized this past year won't be returning in the short term. And when they do, we expect that caution will still underscore the approach. But the Australian market has shown an almost unique resilience in recent years. And we're confident that the current dark clouds will give way to bluer skies sooner than expected.